Assalamu alaikum. And your name is? Wallace D. Salahuddin. And you just shared with me a moment ago, you are one of the pioneers. Yes, sir, I am. And how did you get involved with uh, Islam? Well, at that particular time, you know, I was out in the street doing my own thing. And at that particular time, uh, African Americans here didn't know nothing about Islam at all. And we was the only ones that was on the planet over, over here in this country here acting crazy and doing a little crazy thing. And the, and the jobs that we had, we was working on the jobs, but we were saving up our money and going out and partying every week. Until Elijah Muhammad came and taught Islam, the nation of Islam at that particular time in 1933. So some people, they don't know who Elijah Muhammad is. Who was you know, he? Some people, a lot of people never seen Elijah Muhammad. Especially the one that's in the nation of Islam now. That's following, that's up under the, uh, the guidance and teachings of Louis Farrakhan. And you were at the beginning of the nation as it was? Practically, yes, at the beginning. Now, Elijah Muhammad, you know, a lot of people call him a capper. A lot of people call him a disbeliever. A lot of people call him a, 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 a self-made prophet or a self-made messenger. But he never taught us that he was no messenger nor no prophet. He always taught us that he was nothing but a plain warner to us. And, and the teaching that he had to come and teach us was a way that was to capture our hearts and our minds. And at that particular time, we was being taught about this religion. And the way that he taught his religion to us was a way to bring us up, up out of the, the confusion, the, the stagnation that we was in. And after he had started teaching us a lot of things, he even asked the world to prove him wrong, and it, the world can prove him wrong, wrong from the teachings that he was that he was teaching us. He would give them ten thousand dollars, so no one came up for him to try to get that ten thousand dollars. Everybody in the world came to him for inf for, for information. Everybody came to him for, for guidance, and that includes the Arab world. If it wasn't for him, it wouldn't be no Muslim over here in this country. None. And it was very few Arabs that was coming over here staying, but they wasn't trying to teach Islam to the African Americans. So if it wasn't for Elijah Muhammad? If it wasn't for Elijah Muhammad, it wouldn't be Islam over here in this country. So when people start coming over here and recognize what he was teaching was half correct, some of it wasn't correct, but he was, you know, teaching us at that particular time that this this man named Farad Muhammad had came from the east and he had supposed to have been a law in person. But Alhamdulillah, he had blessed me to know 
who Allah was. And I knew Allah wasn't no human being and he wasn't no man. But a lot of people believe that. He had also taught us at one time that Prophet Muhammad was a Caucasian. And the reason that he did that was to take away the prejudice from us that we have for our ex-slave master. Never thought of it that way. I can see some idea there. Yeah. But here, you know, we, at that particular time, we wasn't reading Quran, but he was giving us ayahs from the Quran in the Muhammad Speaks. The newspaper. The newspaper. So, the eyes that he was giving to us, and we was reading the eyes, and then he would turn around and interpret the eyes to us. He always taught us about Quran. He always taught us about Prophet Muhammad. And one thing, you know, a lot of people didn't realize or didn't take a look at, although Farad Muhammad was being classified as a law in person, we always seen a picture of Farad reading Quran. And one thing a lot don't do, he don't have to read his own book after he had uh, revealed it to Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. From that interpretation by, by itself, let me know that Farad Muhammad was in God. That just was a theory, although it was true that Master Farad came from the East over here to teach Elijah Muhammad Islam. And after Islam was being established over here in this country. The one that was following Elijah Muhammad in the nation of Islam, we was going through a lot of turmoil and confusion from the government. It's still continuing today, that confusion from the government. Yes, it is. See, but it's more of a sophisticated movement from the government now than it was back then. Back then, it was just straight out prejudice from the government, from the Ku Klux Klan's, from, uh, uh, from the, what you call the, the Jewish community, and the uh, on the Nazi ball here that was over here in this country. So it's a lot of African Americans over here in this country that died to establish the nation of this arm over here in this country. This was through the 30s, 40s? This was through the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, and half of the 70s. So Elijah Muhammad died in 1975. When he passed away in 1975, then his son, Imam Ward D. Muhammad, took over. But at that particular time, his name was Wallace Muhammad, Wallace D. Muhammad. But Elijah always taught us that it would be one that would come after him, and he would lead you into all truth. He was speaking about his son. Wallace D. Muhammad. Now his name is Wolf D. Muhammad. And Wallace in Arabic means Wolf D. And that's where I got my name from. Mm -hmm. But my last name is Salahuddin. Did you take the name inspired by? Well, when I was in prison, see, I, um, I ran across a 
an old book that was what that was pertaining to Islam, and I seen a picture of this Muslim brother. His name was Salahuddin Muhammad. So when I was able enough to pronounce that name, then I took that name from a book that Allah blessed me to run across from. So I had Salahuddin as the last name of mine for 40 some years, almost 50 some years. But I mean, Allah, I've been a Muslim for 51 years. And this is where the teaching from the Nation of Islam led me to right now. It's been a long journey. Yes, it has. But this journey is not over with yet. So you just, well, not just, but you recently became 73. Yes, sir, I have. Oh, for, for many, that is uh, that is a long journey. Where might you be going, spiritually or otherwise? Well, my heart and my soul and my consciousness belong to my Lord, Allah, and trying to follow in His he loves Prophet Muhammad footsteps. Mm -hmm. So that's the journey that I'm following now, Prophet Muhammad. So everything I do right now, I'm trying to better my life. I mean, I'm trying to prepare myself for the hereafter. In, in the here and now, we are in a masjid, and uh, you spend time here. Yes, I do. I, uh, I take care of this masjid. You know, if anything around here needs to be fixed, you know, I'll fix it. Yeah. What, what's the name of this masjid? Uh, the University Islamic Center. Islamic Center. And we're in Detroit. On Cass and Forest. Cass and Forest. Forest. So it's about twelve thirty. Mm -hmm. So in half an hour we'll see people coming in to pray. That's right. And, and plus you will see uh, one of the brothers that's on the mature board that helped establish this match yet. This side here used to be a bar. A bar? Yeah, it used to be a bar. That side over there used to be a vacant lot. Okay. You, you want to go over there and see it? You can see it afterwards, or no, okay. Sure. So they used to, they used to hold two jumas here, while that side over there was still a vacant lot. So uh, the Monsieur board got together and bought that vacant lot over there, so it had that other side built. So you make it, you know, a, a bigger. So you know, you ain't supposed to have two jumas. You only supposed to have one jumas. Mm -hmm. So you know, if I was to open that, open, open up that, uh, um, that divider right there, we can go on the other side of that mass here. It's a, up. It's a, a, a big place for the sisters, to, you know, to come in. And this side up here, over here, is for the sisters upstairs. Would you? Can we just maybe just take a peek? The Islamic Center of Detroit on the Wayne State campus. Oh, and there we are, the proper minbar.
this is almost twice triple where we were just sitting a moment ago. Mm -hmm. It's huge. All of this here was a vacant lot. Next door is what you call the cafe, uh, cafe bar. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that cafe bent bar over there, been over there for uh, at least a good, I say, 65 years, maybe close to 70 years. Because when I was a kid, I used to come through here all the time. And this this part here had been a vacant lot for a while. So you've made something very, very beautiful. Now this door here, this door here leads to leads to the parking lot. Okay. Behind the mass here. And you know, and you got two fences. You got one here and you got one here. So the people that come here to park in the parking lot for daily prayer or maybe for Juma, they only park between you, these two fences. But it's a wide area. Okay. Just don't go on the other side because you know they'll tow your car when you get over there. Oh, Brother Slawuddin, thank you very much for your history. And this here is the upstairs for the sisters. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that's the brother here that's on the Michelle board. His name was Brother Tiger. Okay. Anyway, so we go. This um, this brother here.